Hello and welcome to part two of a multi-part screencast on MATLAB command line plotting. In this screencast, we're going to look at how to add titles to a plot, how to add axes labels, how to add a grid to a plot, how to change the axes or the viewing window of a plot, how to change the tick marks on a plot, and how to add a legend to a plot, all from the command line or from an M file. So let's begin with a very simple graph, and you see this code over here in my M file. It's just going to plot when I execute it. I'm going to plot a very basic parabola, y equals x squared. And you can also do this from the command line. Now let's suppose first of all I want to add a title to this graph, some text or math that would appear of above the figure. Well to do that, this is not a plot option that would in, in, appear inside the parenthesis here. This would be a separate line, uh, either a new line in my M file here or a separate command in the command line. And I would just say title to add the title, parenthesis, and then I'm going to, as the tooltip here shows, I'm going to enclose the title, since it's a string, in single quotes. So I might type single quote and then say, this is my graph of y equals x squared. Close the quote, close the parenthesis. If I were in the command window, I would now hit enter. In the M file, I will click the execute button, and you see it shows up over here on top of the graph. Now, one thing to notice is that uh, since this is a string, uh, it displays the text, but also you might notice that it also it formats the uh, exponent. MATLAB knows how to parse uh, LaTeX commands, and so if you enter in a fairly complicated mathematical expression using LaTeX, uh, for example, or something simple, for example, x caret 2, it will know to make that sort of pretty print over here. It's also possible to create a title with two separate lines on it, and to do that, um, I'm going to er erase this stuff on the inside. And to add a two-line title, I would uh, open up a, inside the parenthesis here, title parenthesis, I would open up a curly bracket, and then uh, enclose the first line of my title in single quotes. This is my graph, for example, close the quotes, then a semicolon. Now the second line of the title I would put in another set of quotes, uh, say y equals x squared close the quotes, close the curly brackets, and close the parenthesis. That's already been closed. And now with that, click the execute button and you see it puts it into two separate lines. Now that we've added a title, let's think about labeling our axes. Let's suppose that this graph is a graph of population versus time, and I would like to put time parenthesis years down here and uh, population parenthesis number of people along the y-axis. That's two separate commands. Again, these are not plot options. These are separate commands that I would execute either in separate keystrokes on the command window or in separate lines in my M file. To label the x-axis, I would, the command is simply xlabel in parenthesis. And what we're going to do is enclose whatever label I want to attach to the x-axis. It's a string, so I'm going to enclose it in single quotes. For example, I might put uh, time parenthesis years. Close the quote, close the parenthesis. Then when I execute or hit enter in the command window, we see the uh, label show up down here. And to label the y-axis, again, it's just almost the same thing. The command is y label. And uh, again, open parenthesis, enclose the label in single quotes, and I put population in number of people. Close that parenthesis, close that quote, close that parenthesis off and then hit the enter again, and you see it show up over here. And just as with the title, you can also enter in LaTeX expressions of, to label the x and y axes. So now another thing we might want to add to our graph is a grid, rather than have all this white space in the middle. And this is another command, uh, something that would be separate, not a plot option that would go inside the plot command, but something completely separate. Just very simple, to turn the grid on, I would type grid space on. And then if I'm in the command line, I would hit enter in my M file at execute, and it shows the grid. Notice uh, the default of our grid here is that it puts a grid line, either horizontal or vertical, wherever the tick marks are. Now that can be changed, and we'll discuss how to do change the tick marks in just a minute. If I want to turn the grid off, I just would type grid off, and it's off. Let's go ahead and leave it on, though, because we're going to see something here in just a moment about changing the tick marks. There we go. Now, we can also change the axis or viewing window. Let's suppose I wanted not to look at this parabola not from x equals negative 4 to 4 and y equals 0 to 16, but maybe only in the first quadrant. So let's set x to go from 0 to 4 and y to go from 0 to 25, for instance. Now, how would I do that? Uh, from the command line or from an M file, the command to change the axis, which is what we're doing here, is axis, A-X-I-S. Parenthesis. And now I'm going to enter in a four element vector here. So let me go ahead and open my 
and close my uh, square brackets and close the parentheses. And the elements of this vector, the first element is the minimum x. Let's say that's 0. The second element is the maximum x, and we said that was going to be 4. The third element is the minimum y. Let's set that to 0. And the math th fourth element is the maximum y. Let's set that equal to 25. So basically, axis command feeds uh, MATLAB a vector that tells the, uh, the parameters for the viewing window. And click the uh, Evaluate button, and we see what we have. Now, once again, the grid marks snapped to the new tick marks, and you notice the tick marks have also changed as well. If I want to get back to my original axis, I would just type axis auto, no parenthesis, and that gets me back to my original format here. Now, let me show you how to change where the tick mark labelings happen. We have tick marks currently at every one unit on the x-axis and every two units on the y-axis. Let's suppose I wanted to change that. Let's suppose I wanted to have tick marks at uh, every two units on the x-axis and every one unit on the y-axis. Just flip those. Well, we're going to use the command called set uh, in MATLAB to accomplish this. And set is a general command that does a lot of different things. But one of the things we can do is set tick marks with it. So set, I'm going to open parenthesis because this has three different arguments. The first argument is GCA. Uh, GCA stands for get current axis. GCA is to graphics what ANS is to computation. Uh, ANS, as you know, refers to the last thing that you executed in MATLAB, the answer. GCA is the last figure that you produced in MATLAB. So we're going to, this is telling MATLAB to go to the current axis, which is the parabola we're looking at. I'm going to put a comma and a quote, and I'm going to set the x tick, so it's quote, single quote, capital X, capital T, ICK, close the quote, comma, and now I'm going to feed MATLAB a vector that tells where the label should go. So I'm going to open up a vector, and I said I wanted tick marks every two units, so that would be negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4. Okay, close off that vector, close the parenthesis, and now when I execute, you see the tick marks have changed, and so has the grid. The grid always snaps to the tick marks. Now, just to show you the power of MATLAB's vector capabilities, anytime I enter in a vector, I can enter it in in many different ways. Let's suppose that I wanted to go the opposite direction on the x-axis and put more tick marks than I originally had. Let's suppose I wanted to put tick marks from negative 4 to 4 at every half a unit. Well, I could put in a vector and manually type in negative 4, negative 3.5, and, and so on, or I could give it some more efficient syntax, for example, negative 4, 0.54 with colons in between. That creates a vector 2 and it starts at negative 4, ends at plus 4, and steps by 0.5. When I execute this, you see what I get. I get exactly what I wanted. So there's more than one way to enter in a vector anytime you want to enter it. I'm going to change this back to negative 4, 2, 4, like so, and that's going to get me back to spaced every two units. Now suppose I wanted to set the y uh, tick marks to be, I believe we said every one unit, so I'm not skipping by two, but skipping by one. It's almost the same command. We're going to type set, again, GCA for get current axis. This time I'm going to say, quote, y tick. And like I said, it's almost the same command. Let's go from 0 to 16, step by one, like so. And then that will change once I execute by clicking the play button or by hitting enter in the command window, it changes the tick marks accordingly. Finally, let's see how we can add a legend to this plot. Now a legend in a mathematical plot is just basically like a legend on a map. It's a guide that tells you what things are. Um, I'm going to create a new line here and I'm going to type the word legend, parenthesis, and I'm going to enclose in a string, uh, again with a single quote, uh, just have whatever label I want to have on my legend. So I'm going to type, say, my function close the quote, close the parenthesis, and then I will execute that line. And you see what shows up over here is a little box that tells you what the graph represents. Again, it's just like a legend on a map. Uh, it tells you what the features are. And this is going to be especially handy in the future when we have more than one plot on the same set of axes. Uh, this little legend will give us a guide that's an easy visual lookup to see which graph is which color. So let's recap what we learned in this screencast. We can add a title to a plot using the title command, again, either from an M file or from the command line. Label the axes using X labeled or Y label commands. Add or remove a grid using the grid command. Change the viewing window using axis and then a vector to specify the borders. Change tick marks using set and then either the X tick or Y tick options. And then finally, add or remove a legend using the legend command. Thanks for watching.